it's not only a great movie, but it's also a necessary movie that we all need to watch because it reflects what is really going on in this society, which is terrible, very sad. I mean, not the movie, the situation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you can comment on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it was an opportunity to try to connect to people on a different level, on, a, on an emotional level, at a heart level, with a subject matter that was like extremely present in our lives at the time last summer. And, um, you know, it was, it was clearly a time where people <clears throat> were very vocal and, and, you know, passionate about expressing their feelings about what was going on. And, and, and this movie is an expression of that. It's, it's taking that that energy and that emotion that I was feeling, that a lot of people were feeling and, and channeling it into a cinematic experience that would hopefully, you know, open up people's uh, hearts and minds to different types of conversations that were possible about the subject matter. I think, I think it's great to, to through, a, through a fictional story with characters that you appreciate, uh, you're bringing a message that is totally necessary. When I first saw the movie, I thought I was going to, it was going to be a love story, a one night stand and having fun, but then reality kicks. <laughs> I mean, I felt that I was like the, the, uh, the character as well. I was going down to the street facing this police. So it's uh, really cool. And uh, I want to say, you're saying it was done when it was, no, I think it's very, uh, very necessary now because we're the whole world is watching the trial of uh, the uh, yeah, sure. yeah so not only in America but all over the world we're watching that in Black Lives Matter so uh, yeah 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 I yeah. mean the idea of uh, the idea of setting setting the story up with Carter leaving you know this romantic experience that he had was to, to, to set up the idea that no matter what color you are, no matter who you are, you can start in a very mundane and, and neutral situation. And the difference for Carter, which is the difference for a lot of black people, is even when you're doing things that are very neutral, that have nothing to do with the color of your skin, uh, you're, you can be quickly reminded of the color of your skin, your race, will can find you in the world. Even if you're not paying attention to it, it will find you. And that's what happens to Carter. When he walks outside, you know, blackness finds him in that way where he's having a very neutral, normal experience, smoking a cigarette, getting ready to go home to his dog and everything turns on a dime. And it's a direct reflection of the assumptions about his character and appearance. So, uh, yeah, uh, let, let me ask you, the, the actors are great. I know that, uh, I know the badass, the rapper, the other actor, I didn't know, but I think they do a great job. I mean. Uh, Andrew, Andrew Howard, the cop, you mean? The police, the yes. police. Yeah, he's amazing. I mean, he's, he's, I mean he's, he has a stellar career. He's, he's in Tenet, he's in Perry, Ma uh, Perry Mason, he's in Watchmen. He's, he's, he just always plays as such an intense character, you know, set of characters. He, and he was really like a, he was like a leader on set um, because he was definitely the most experienced uh, of the of our actors and he really set a tone because he actually did I don't want to give anything away but the climactic scene his 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 final scene of the movie we, we shot that on the first day and and he and he turned up and he delivered this enormous and mesmeric performance on day one and he that really set the tone for everybody after that we're like okay that's what we're building towards everybody we've got to earn we have to earn that now right. come on yeah. well but uh, wait i'm not going to use this part the one oh, i'm asking. okay no i i'm going to use what you just said but i'm curious about you're referring to the scene when he drops he comes to the it, it drops off yeah 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 we drops him off at home. best of the bunch then, yeah uh I'm amazed that you started with that one. It's so intense. We did. I didn't. We I, yeah. We did not want to. It was the, the the rules of filming during COVID were very very intense. And so it was logistic or something. Purely logistics. Whoa. There was simply no other way to do it. And I was like, please don't make us do that. But we had to. So. because it, it, yeah, when you watch the movie, you you're.
you're working uh, your yourself into that situation, but starting from that is intense. Yeah. But it was good. So, how important is it for you uh, both uh, to be nominated for an Oscar? I mean, it's an incredible honor. The film obviously deserves it. And uh... um, I mean, I, as someone who you know is, you know, been doing this for a little while now, um, <clears throat> you know, even before you know anything about Hollywood, you know what the Oscars are, you know, you, you the Oscars <laughs> is a big deal. And it's it's the, the crowning achievement of, a, of an actor or filmmaker, you know, in, in, across, the, across the globe. It's the thing every actor or filmmaker wants to, to, to achieve. And for, for us to, to, at least for me to be here is one of the most incredible, incredible feelings to, to have made something with so many talented people that has risen to the level of being, you know, acknowledged by the academy and by, by the people who are, you know, some of the, a lot of the people we admire, a lot of the people we, we strive to be like, and, and want to model our careers after are the people we are now, you know, peers with in, in that way. And um, it's, it's something we don't take lightly at all. It's, it's truly an amazing, uh, uh, honor and it's a testament also to the academy acknowledging short filmmaking and the, and the calling card that it can be for someone's career because it, it is the, the what we did was only possible because of that like if we if there was no acknowledgement by the academy of of short filmmaking short documentary making short animation making you know there was no way for us to to tell this story and at the speed at which we did it and get it in front of eyes as fast as we did it and to have it now be elevated on a global scale like this, it's only possible because, you know, we were able to do it with a short film. Would you, would you say that uh, honoring short movies, it's a way of honoring the passion of a narrative? I mean, because short movies are made uh, you don't have a 20 million to tell a story. You do it with your maybe your credit cards, your passion, you borrow money, and then there you go. So uh, would you say that there is a parallel between uh, the recognition of your film and the recognition of the passion that filmmakers like you develop to tell a story with, uh, you know, as you said, you had difficulties shooting with COVID. I'm sure financially it was not so you don't have like 20 million dollars like right there, you no, know? We don't. <laughs> no, we very much <laughs> do not. Um, we, Drayvon pitched me this idea and he said, look, you know, before there was a script, it was just two lines, you know, it was just the, the log line of the film. Uh, and I was like, and this was right, this was literally a week after everyone watched George Floyd be murdered, you know, and, uh, and I was like, we have to do this. We have to do this and we have to do it now. And the short film, model is the was the only way to turn this story around this quickly and get it to into the conversation you know we, we we premiere on netflix next week and the trial is happening right now and what the film the intent of the film is not you know it's 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 this is what it feels like to be black in america this is what it feels like to walk out of your house and uh and be judged not by your actions at all, but by the color of your skin. And it gives give you that sense of oppression. And the short film medium is the only way we could possibly have achieved it on this turnaround time. Uh, you know, and, and you know, one of the reasons this, this film feels so blessed to us is that we've, Trayvon and I have both been in the industry for a while now. And you, know, you get more no's than yeses when you have a dream project that you want to do usually, right? You know, we have no money <laughs> uh, and we need to do it as soon as possible. Um, and there's a pandemic going on, can you help us? <laughs> and, um, and I think one of the magic things that happened with this film is that people just kept saying yes. And like actually Joey said something when he came on, Joey Badass, uh, the bad mon, um, when, yeah. he joined, when he joined the project, he's like, "This isn't." He's like, "I don't know what a short film is." He's like, "I don't know what that means." We're just making a movie, right? I was like, "Yeah, we are just making a movie." Like, what does it mean? Like, especially in this modern era, when how things are consumed, cinemas have been closed for a year. Like, like, what is it? What, the old differentials are all changing. You know, the, the categories are very different. So right now, yeah, we just made a film. That there's no difference between what we made and something that's 
three times longer that would be a, then be a feature film in terms of process or emotional result or uh, you know anything like that. And so I think the fact that the the Academy has such a long and storied history of understanding short film and ce celebrating it, I think it's just going to become more and more valuable in the modern era of the way that media is made and consumed. What, what I consider, my last comment, if you want, what I consider really scary is that in America, you can be alive right now and maybe you can turn the corner and you can be killed for no reason. And, it, and nothing happens. I don't know. Uh, yeah. It's, no, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's exactly the emotion. and the, That's what I love, the movie. I love it for many reasons, but that's, oh my God, this is, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the reality that, you know, our country is, is extremely complex. And, you know, you, it's one of the few places in the, in the Western society, especially, where you can go to the grocery store and it can turn into a massacre. And you can go to school and it can turn into a massacre. You could be at a spa and it can turn into a massacre. And, and there, there has been proven ways to stop this from happening. And it happens on a large scale with, uh, with mass shootings. And it happens, you know, through our policing with, you know, encounters with police for, for African-Americans in certain communities. And so it's, it's difficult to, to both live with that as an artist and not do something to to speak to it or tr to try to affect change and you know i've had so many people reach out both friends and strangers who have said how the film has literally changed conversations within their family and in their circle of friends about this particular issue because it it causes you to look at it through a lens with which you probably haven't and it disarms you from doing what typically happens when you're in a uh, having a conversation or a dialogue with someone and you can't intellectualize certain things and some things just have to be felt some things just have to be experienced and the movie is that it is the experience it is the feeling and there there's nothing for you to say back you just have to to feel it and accept it and that's what i think has been one of the strongest you know reactions and elements of, of the film uh, we're out of time, but I just wanted to say I love the lady with the phone saying he didn't do anything. She was uh -huh. Mona Shoshone. She's a wonderful actress. Everybody hires. She's great. She's, She's great.